Hey, what's up guys, Solid Dubs here, and today I'm going to be doing a video on what to look for on a monitor. The reason I'm doing this is in order to make a separate video from my best monitors 2007, 2016 to 2017 made for gamers. So, the reason I'm doing this video is in order to make it separate and also to go through different technologies. I'll go as fast as I can because I don't want to bore you with a 30 minute video. I could ramble on for a couple of hours about different technologies. But let's get straight into it. First of all, what you want to look for is the price. Now the price will determine the technology found within it and in terms of the overall monitor itself. So let's get into what that means. First of all, you've got the design and build. You've got monitors that can have height adjustment, tilt adjustment, can move around, have webcams, low bezel, you name it. That can affect the price. Next up, you've got the resolution. 1080p, 2K, 4K, 5K, 8K maybe one day. This makes a massive difference in terms of the price and probably arguably the biggest difference in price. Often 1080p is the uh, standard in terms of gaming monitors, but nowadays you can find 2K as a sweet spot. And when I say 2K, I mean 2560 times 1440. The reason I say it's a sweet spot is because technology has moved on so far that now at 2K you can find 144 hertz monitors that have got a low response time and low input lag. Whereas previously, you only find a maximum refresh rate of 60 hertz at 2K. Now, that's no longer the case. And in all honesty, when, once you go 2K, you never go back. Eey. So, that's what I would say. Next up, you've got the aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is pretty much normal at 16 by 9. But if you're getting a curved display, which is long and say 35 inch monitor, then you're going to be looking at 21 by 9 or 21 by 10 aspect ratio. Do bear that in mind because some games are a little bit picky with aspect ratio. But the norm now is 16 by 9. Next up, you've got refresh rate, which is arguably the biggest one when it comes to gamers. The average, um, I would say the normal um, refresh rate you'll expect from a monitor is 60 hertz. That is what a um, NTSC um, a, a TV will do, and you've got all different types of uh, panels nowadays that do 60 hertz. However, the better, more gaming specific monitors will be able to do 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 165 or 180 or even 200 hertz. It might be unheard of, it might be crazy to think that sort of hertz is possible, but nowadays it is and as we move forward you'll find higher refresh rate monitors. Pretty much norm I, I bet one day will be 144 hertz for everyone even if you're just going to be browsing Facebook. The point is refresh rate makes a difference and the reason why it makes a difference is because how quickly the monitor can respond to a certain image and how fluid it will be. The higher refresh rate that it will be the quicker you'll see a, a, a person appear on your screen versus a 60 hertz one and that means it'll give you a competitive edge over the person appearing here versus there. Hopefully that makes sense. Next up you've got the panel technology. Nowadays you've got TN, IPS and PLS. PLS and IPS are the same thing, just made by different manufacturers, and TN is a different type of, of, um, of technology. Now, these technologies are made for LED monitors. Nowadays, all you've got is LED monitors. And it is to be, it's also to be noted that it's LED on an LCD screen. So you'll see LED, LCD pretty much pasted most places on manufacturers' websites. But to make it simple, it is an LED monitor. These LED, LEDs have different ways of displaying their, their pixels and their colors. And by this, it's the different type of technologies you've got. Now, TN is known to be a, a lower response time, lower input lag, worse colors, worse um, uh, <laughs> viewing angles, which really doesn't make that much of a difference uh, nowadays because you're going to be sitting in front of your, P uh, your PC or your monitor. But also the biggest one is the fact they're cheaper to manufacture and therefore cheaper to buy. IPS PLS panels on the other hand have got fantastic colours, much better viewing angles um, and are much um, more colour accurate. But they've got a higher response time which is not liked and a higher input lag which is also not liked and they're very much more expensive. Nowadays however, the two technologies are getting closer and closer together. You've got TN panels with much better colours and much better viewing angles. Um, and you've got IPSs which are getting much cheaper and are much better uh, suited for gamers. But nevertheless, you should make a distinction between the two. 
Next up, we've got response time and input lag. Now, these two are very hard to explain. It will be very hard for me to explain it in a short time. I would highly, highly suggest you guys Google what is response time on a monitor, what is input lag on a monitor. But in order to make it as simple as I can, response time is the way the uh, monitor can shift from one color to another. Often, the quote of response time is G to G, which is gray to gray. The real world test is black to white, and often you'll find those tests on certain websites like TFT Central, which go into depth about how these um, pa panels can um, display one color or the other. The reason it makes difference is because if you're shifting from one scene to the other, or even if you're just looking left and right on an FPS game or any other any game, then you'll note that a lower response time monitor will able to re will change that pixel much easier. Unfortunately, this is not always the case, and the quoted response time is very much different from the real world response time. And you've got a thing called overdrive, which is found on most. Um, um, modern day monitors because all it does is reduce that response time, that quoted response time down even further. Unfortunately when you do that you get thing called ghosting or even negative ghosting uh, or overshoot as some people might call it and that creates a sort of blur image behind the actual image you're supposed to see. You'll be able to see some tests that I do on monitor reviews or you'll be able to see again like TFT Central or monitors, uh, people who do that um, and they'll be able to give you a much more um, accurate description of what it is and a way of how you can see it on your monitor. Now input lag, as you saw I just clicked my mouse there, input lag is the difference between how fast your input, which is your mouse often, uh, takes to respond to your, uh, the monitor takes to respond to your input. In other words, if you move from left to right, how fast does that monitor respond to the input? The low input lag is much preferred. Again, you'll only really find this on a, um, on a testing website or someone like myself who actually tests the input lag f from experience, uh, or should I say through experience. But input lag is often confused with response time because the higher the response time of the monitor, which is moving from one pixel to the other, let's say you're shifting from left to right, means that the input lag can be associated to response time because of how you're moving from left to right. So the slower moving from left to right, the higher uh, input lag it will be perceived, but in reality that is just a response time of the monitor being unable to shift from one color to the other when you're changing scene. Hopefully that makes sense. And all I'm trying to say is that those two shouldn't be really confused with, with another, but they're often associated with another just because of the way that they interlink um, in terms of technology. But that's what you should know. Next up, you've got PWM um, flicker. PWM flicker is basically the way that LEDs um, are displayed. PWM, PWM flicker can be noticed by some people, so if you're sensitive, you find yourself sensitive, sensitive to some monitors, it could be just the fact that you have PWM flicker um, on um, on a monitor which is pulse width modu modulation to do with how the um, LEDs are being displayed. So look for a flicker free monitor in case um, you're sensitive to that. Anti blue light technology is literally essentially a way of reducing the blue, uh, blue light that's being um, shown to you on the monitor and that will um, give you less um, eye fatigue uh, and just generally make it easier to look at for long periods of time. That's why you see gamers with these yellow glasses. Next up, you've got the fact of visa mount. A visa mount is very simple. It's just a mount at the back of the monitor, which means you can change the uh, default stand found on the monitor. Not a big deal, but something that people will be looking for if you want to do a triple monitor setup. Next up, you've got ULMB. ULMB is a way of reducing the uh, motion blur on found on the monitor. Often ULMB will lock down the monitor's um, a refresh rate to 120 hertz maximum and will reduce the brightness. It's not something I personally like, but some people who are sensitive to motion blur will often choose to enable ULMB. But again, you'll have to have ULMB enabled um, on your um, on your monitor in order to actually use it. Next up, you've got G-Sync and FreeSync. Now, these two technologies are made by NVIDIA, which is G-Sync and AMD FreeSync. Now, G-Sync monitors are often found to be £100 to £150 more expensive, whereas FreeSync monitors are, as the name suggests, free. The catch is, if you want to use G-Sync on your G-Sync monitor, you'll need a G-Sync uh, GPU, which means that you'll need an NVIDIA graphics card. Likewise for AMD. You can't have an AMD FreeSync monitor, which I have over here with the Acer XF270HU, um, and my NVIDIA GTX 960, because those two technologies don't work together. 
But what they do is interesting because they do both the same thing. They essentially have a little chip within the monitor which locks down the monitor's refresh rate with your GPU's output. Let's say your GPU is outputting 200 FPS, well your monitor can only do 60 FPS. There's a hundred, uh, well, there's 120, 140, nice one maths, 140 FPS which is lost there. And that FPS loss means that it causes tearing through your monitor. It's not something you'd be able to see if you record your monitor, in other words you use, I don't know, let's say Shadow Play or, um, or um, OBS, something like that, to record your uh, monitor. Uh, or your gameplay, but instead you'll see it visually happening on your monitor. You'll see tearing occurring on your monitor. And that's literally to do with the frame rate being outputted from your GPU to your monitor. Whew, this description. But if you're more interested in that, definitely check it out. Finally, you've got the inputs and the audio. Now inputs, it means the display port, HDMI, VGA, DVI. I would opt for HDMI or display port. In fact, nowadays I run pretty much everything on display port simply due to the fact of the maximum resolution you can uh, you can output and the maximum refresh rate you can output on DisplayPort. It's the amount of transmission that can be displayed uh, that can be transmitted through the cable and the technology. It's something to bear in mind in case your GPU doesn't have like a certain input input or output should I say whereas your monitor does. Very important to to mention them there and also yes cables make no sense. Don't buy a gold plated HDMI bro no need for that. Just buy a normal standard £2, £1 HDMI cable, it'll do the same thing as a £50 HDMI cable. But you should note there are different versions of HDMI and different versions of DisplayPort. Not really important all that or in, in all honesty, but it can be in certain scenarios. Make sure you Google that in case you're really interested. Next up is audio. Some, speak, uh, some um, monitors have speakers. They're often crap, and they are all crap, even monitors that have boasted a sound quality, they're really not. Uh, they're just useful for having sound there for in Windows notifications or if you don't have any speakers about. Why don't you have any speakers about? But anyway, that is the point. Anyway guys, hopefully that's been a good description of what monitors are. I've been quite quick and quite condensed about it, but I tried to fit everything I can and cram it into one sh short video. If you've got more questions, post them down in the, um, the comments uh, below. In the description, I'll post down links and descriptions of certain technologies I talked about. So it'll give you a better um, idea of what, uh, what you want if you want further reading in them. Um, it's very, very important that you read up or ask questions before you make a purchase and decision and that's why I thought to make this video. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and favorite and share. Bye bye.